Hello, everyone. This is Ke Chenghua. Today, I am going to introduce our work, removing double logging with passive data persistence in LSM tree-based relational database. Since 1970s, relational databases have been playing a central role in the heart of the enterprise systems. The story engine, as a core component in RDBs, typically adopts a B-tree-based structure which has been heavily tuned and optimized for traditional database workloads. With the emergence of internet service and applications, the classic B-tree-based story engine, after dominating database systems for decades, is facing several challenges. Unlike conventional database workloads, these new applications and their supporting systems often generate very write-intensive workloads. Many of them use a relatively simple and fixed data schema. Some systems adopt expensive flash storage and thus are very sensitive to space usage and demand efficient data compression for cost saving. Correspondingly, the story engine design must meet a set of new requirements, such as scalability, space efficiency, compressibility, IO sequentiality, and etc. To address these new challenges and demands, a recent technical trend is to deploy a log-structured merge tree, the LSM tree, based story engine in RDBs. A typical example is Facebook's MyRox. Different from the traditional structure of MySQL, MyRox replaces the original B-tree-based story engine with an LSM tree-based story engine. Although such an LSM tree-based story engine significantly outperforms the B-tree in terms of both performance and space usage, it brings a new critical issue which can incur heavy and unnecessary performance overhead. Take MyRox as an example. Specifically, integrating an SM tree based story engine in the RDB essentially creates a two-layer structure. On the top RDB layer, the RDB logic handles the database-related complexities, such as buffer pool management, core optimization, data recovery, and etc. At the bottom story engine layer, the story engine processes requests from the RDB layer and are responsible for reliably and efficiently storing data in persistent storage. Such a design enables great flexibility, efficiency, allowing the two layers to be independently optimized without affecting each other. However, as the complete data store itself, the LSM tree based story engine has many functions similar to the RDB atop it. Some of these functions are redundant and unnecessary which can cause severe resources waste and negative performance impact. One such critical component is log, which is the focus of this paper. In an RDB system, a bin log records all persist CQ statements. Once system crash happens, the CQ statements in the bin log are replayed for data recovery. With an LSM tree-based story engine, each CQ statement is translated into a sequence of key-value items which are stored in LSM trees for persistent storage. In an LSM tree-based story engine, a write ahead log, the WL, is maintained to record all KV update operations. Each KV must be first written to the WL before being inserted into the tree structure, which is also for the purpose for data recovery. In the whole stack, any change made to the database is protected twice. When redundant, copy is preserved in the database bin log, and another one is in the story engine's WL. Such redundancy apparently lead to unnecessary space usage, and even worse, these log-related I/O operations are synchronous and reside in the system critical path, resulting in significant I/O overhead and severely affecting system performance. We call the both that issue a double logging problem, which is a system situation that data is overprotected by preserving database changes multiple times more than necessary. To address the double logging problem, our key idea is to completely remove WL from the LSM tree-based story engine and solely rely on bin log for data recovery, because bin log contains the complete transaction information. Based on that, we can safely recover all necessary data upon system failures. Basically, our main idea is to remove WL while still retaining data reliability upon failures. However, it is non-trivial to achieve. We must address three critical challenges. First, in an LSM tree-based RDB, 
The RDB layer translates each transaction into multiple key value items and submit to the lower storage engine layer. It is assumed that the key value items are persisted once the RDB receives completion. However, if the WL was eliminated, such an assumption could not be hold anymore. In other words, the transaction commit flag in the bin log can no longer be reliably viewed as the safe point for data persistence. Since the RDB layer cannot be certain whether the transaction prior to this point have been truly made persistent or not. Second, as for storage engine with multiple RSM trees, NCQ transaction is translated into a batch of key value items, which are often distributed to multiple RSM trees, or to the column families in RustDB. Once the memory buffer of a column family is filled up, it is flushed to the storage. Since the size and arrival rate of KV items in different RSM trees may vary, such memory buffer flushes can happen at distinct frequencies across different RSM trees. This could lead to a situation that at a point of time, when system failure happens, NCQ transaction may be partially persistent. In other words, some KV items of the transaction have already been flushed to the storage, but some others are not yet. Thirdly, RSM tree based RDBs use a log sequence number, the RSN, for concurrency control and meeting the ACID requirements. Each KV is allocated with an RSN, which is essentially a globally unique sequence number. The items of a KV batch, which corresponds to NCQ transaction, are guaranteed to receive a sequence of consecutive RSNs. With WL, we can guarantee that each recovered KV item still carries the originally assigned RSN. But no, without WL, we can't. To address those critical challenges, we propose a solution called Passive Data Persistence Scheme, the Passive. The Passive includes three major components, Passive Flushing Policy, Apple-based Persistence, and Partial Recovery, respectively. The main purpose of Passive Flushing is to address the partial persistence problem in an efficient way. As mentioned previously, the main difficulty stems from the uncoordinated flushes of the memory buffers of the underlying RSM trees. Since modern RSM tree based storage engine maintains multiple RSM trees for parallelizing IOs and maximizing the achievable performance. In this example, we have three transactions translated into six KV items buffered in two column families. The problem is that the flush operation of memory buffer from different column families are completely independent and uncoordinated meaning that memory buffer flushes may happen at different frequencies depending on the size and arrival rate of the incoming KV items, which often vary significantly across column families and dynamically change over time. As a result, the KV items translated from one CQ transaction may be persistent on storage at different time points. As mentioned, the two buffers may not be flushed to persistent storage at the same time, which causes partial persistence. We have several possible approaches to deal with this problem. The first one is the naive approach. It directly disables WL without other operations. However, the system integrity cannot be guaranteed due to the uncoordinated CQ and KV operations, which can cause incomplete recovery. Even if we perform data recovery by replaying the bin log, we have to replay all the records in the entire bin log, one after another sequentially. This would incur a time-consuming data recovery process, cause a long service outage and system downtime. Another simple solution is to directly insert an active flush point after a number of transactions to explicitly invoke flush operations to all memory buffers, randomly creating a synchronization point. Although this active approach guarantees that all transactions before the active flush point are persistent safely, it still has several limitations. First, the transaction is essentially serialized, which foils the effort of creating parallelism. Second, frequent flushes would in effect invalidate the memory buffers, causing many small and synchronous IOs to storage. Most importantly, this approach impairs the effort in the current design of modularity. It forces the RDB layer to directly control the memory buffer operations at the lower storage engine layer which we desire to avoid. To avoid intrusive changes to the existing two-layer structure, 
we develop a passive approach to handle uncoordinated flushes. When the story engine flushes a memory buffer, a special KV item called flush flag is inserted into the KV buffer and flushed together with other KVs to the storage. The purpose is to place a marker in the persistent storage to indicate the progress of the latest flush operation. In this way, we can use a flush flag to keep track of the latest transaction and its KV items that are persistent in storage during the flush operation, from which we can derive the safe point for data persistent during recovery. Flush flag is a special key value item. Its key is a randomly selected magic number. Its value contains the data persistent information, such as the critical data persistent point, the range of the logical sequence number, and etc. We can store and retrieve a flush flag just like any key value item. In this example, the flush flag records that the data persistent point of column family 2 is at transaction 3. Along with the passive flushing, we have also developed an Apple-based persistent policy to determine the global data persistent point, guaranteeing that we only need to perform partial data recovery to recover the necessary data and eliminate redundant QV operations that have already been persistent before system crash. In this example, in column family 1, we do not need to recover data of transaction before transaction T because they have already been persistent. Due to time limit, we cannot give all the details. More information is available in the paper. We have implemented a fully functional prototype of Passive based on Facebook's MyRocks. Our workload simulates a typical application scenario supporting social network engine. We use LinkBench to generate workloads for evaluating MyRocks and Passive. We also perform evaluation using the TPCC benchmark to compare the performance and potential recovery time. We first evaluated the performance of passive and MyRox under LinkBench for both loading and query phase. The results show that the passive shows strong performance and story IO advantages over the stock MyRox. We have also studied the average latencies of different types of requests as well as detailed throughput during the evaluation which show that passive outperforms MyRox in terms of almost all operations, such as put, update, delete, and so on. For more evaluation results on the link bench, please refer to paper for details. We then evaluate active approach by configuring different threshold of transactions and compare their performance with passive. Here, passive behaves better in terms of total execution time, compression IOs, and throughput by which we conclude that the passive way not only helps return the efficiency of memory, but also avoids interfering the foreground request. We have also studied the data recovery performance, as we increase the interval of flushing memory buffers from 100 transactions to 2,000 transactions. The recovery time of, of the active approach generally increases with larger variance. Meantime, passive achieves a recovery time in a mid-range with much smaller variance. By performing evaluations using the TPCC benchmark, we found that passive still shows significant performance improvement. First, passive outperforms my rocks cross the board. Additionally, the naive approach that just simply disable WL represents the possibly achievable performance of passive. Here we can see that passive achieves nearly identical performance to the naive approach. As for recovery time, although the column families receive keywords at skewed speeds, the recovery time of passive is far less than that of the naive approach. As the test phase runs longer, the recovery time of the naive approach increases almost linearly. We have also performed the experiment on other aspects, such as general recovery time and etc. More details can be found in the paper. LSM tree-based storage engine is becoming increasingly popular in modern relational databases. A unique and critical issue is the double logging problem, which incurs high and unnecessary overhead. In this paper, we have systematically studied this challenging problem and proposed passive to optimize the system design for achieving high performance and reliability. Experimental results show that our solution can efficiently improve the system performance. For more details about this paper, please contact me by the underlying email address. This is all about my presentation.
Thanks, and I will be happy to take your question.